It's Technicians Tuesday everybody. Today we will be showing you how you can avoid ever running out of fuel in your boat. And then next week we will be tying last week's video on your fuel system together with the starting system video to give you the experience of knowing what to do if your engine won't start. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram because our contest prize this week is a new Sierra boat fuel gauge. So if you can't read your gauge anymore, here's your chance to get a new one. Now when it comes to not running out of gas in your boat, we need to make sure that the fuel gauge is operating the way that it should. There are only five main components in a regular analog fuel gauge system. These parts are the fuel gauge itself, the fuel sender that goes in the fuel tank, the power wire to the gauge and the ground, and the sending wire that comes from the sender to the gauge. These fuel gauges are pretty simple. You only have three wires that come into the gauge. They are the power or 12 volts wire, which you want to bring in from the key on power wire from the key switch. That way, whenever you turn the key on, the gauge will receive power and turn on the fuel gauge system. These are usually a purple wire or a yellow wire, depending on what brand engine you have on your boat. After that, we have a ground cable that will go from the gauge to your boat's grounding system. It is extremely important that this ground is connected to the same ground that is going to the fuel sender. If these two grounds are not connected together for some reason, then the system will not operate and you won't know how much fuel is in your boat, leaving you with a great opportunity of running out of gas. Then the last wire that goes to the gauge is the sending wire that comes from the fuel sender. This wire is normally or should be a pink wire in most boats. This provides the gauge with the position of the fuel sender. The only thing that is usually left on these gauges is the light which just uses jumper wires coming from the power wire to the light wire, then a jumper to go from the ground to the light. And that is it for the fuel gauge. These are fairly simple systems and have worked for many, many years now. When it comes to the fuel sender that is in the tank though, the way that these operate is that they use resistance to send back to the fuel gauge, which takes that resistance reading and moves the level needle across the gauge showing you how much fuel you have. Generally, these senders will range from 240 to 250 ohms down to about 30 or 35 ohms. So when the float is at the bottom of the sender, it will have the most amount of resistance and read somewhere around 245 or so ohms on your meter. Once it is at the top of the sender, it will read somewhere around 30 or so ohms. We can test the sender by simply hooking it up to our voltage meter and running the float up and down the sender, watching the resistance change. Making sure that it is a smooth transition as the float moves along the sender. There are a couple of different styles of senders and there are a ton of different brands of fuel sender manufacturers. We usually stick with the WEMA or KUS fuel senders that make this style of sender though. There are generally two types of senders, this type where they are straight up and down with a float that goes up and down on the sender, and this style where the float is on an extended metal or plastic rod that turns the mechanism at the top of the sender to send the resistance reading to the fuel gauge. We'd recommend using the straight up and down style in your permanent boat fuel tanks if possible. They are what you are going to more commonly find in your boat's fuel tank though both styles have been in production for so many years that they both have a good proven track record, you will usually find larger senders to be straight up and down and then in smaller tanks that don't have a lot of distance to move, you will find the metal rod style, like in portable fuel tanks. So depending on where the float is positioned due to the amount of fuel that is in the tank, it will send a signal to the fuel gauge via the pink wire and the gauge will interpret that signal to move the needle on the gauge showing you how much fuel is in the tank. It isn't uncommon for any of these components to fail in this system, but troubleshooting the system is actually pretty easy. You can start by finding the fuel sender by opening the fuel tank access, which is usually in the middle of the boat. Then, disconnect the pink and black wires from the sender, and with the key in the on position, touch the two wires together. The gauge should spike to full, letting you know that the gauge, the power, the ground, and the signal wire are all functioning properly. This also lets you know that the issue is something going on with the sender. 
If the gauge doesn't spike though, the first test we'll do is to check for battery voltage at the gauge using our meter. We are looking for 12 volts or close to that from the power wire to the ground wire on the back of the fuel gauge. If we don't have voltage here at the gauge, we can check the ground side quickly by just going to the closest ground with our negative meter lead and leaving the positive lead on the gauge. If we see the voltage show up on the meter, then we know that the ground is bad. But if we don't see the voltage come back using the known good ground, we need to follow the power wire down to where it gets power from and confirm that it isn't broken or has a blown fuse or isn't getting power at all. Once we get power back to the gauge though, the next test is to rule out the sending unit wires by taking a piece of wire and connecting it straight to ground at the battery and then bringing it to where the fuel sender is. Again, touch the sending wire and the ground wire that you brought and watch for the gauge to spike in order to cross off the ground being the issue. If the gauge spikes, you know that the ground is broken somewhere. You can also do this test by using your meter. By just ohming out the ground wire to see if it has high resistance, meaning the wire is broken or corroded somewhere. We'll do the same exact test for the signal wire by going from the gauge and connecting it to the ground to see if the gauge spikes and ruling out the sending wire. If everything checks out here, then we know that the fuel sender is not operating properly and we can pull the sender out of the tank and test it by using our meter and watching the resistance to see if there are any breaks or bad readings. leaving us with just needing to replace the sender or run new wires or replace the gauge depending on what you found to be the issue. This same system functions the same way when it is hooked up to different manufacturers digital gauges with only a couple of different tweaks to it. Before we go over those changes though, it's the right time to hit that subscribe button and get the bell on for all of the great information. And for the fuel gauge, just let us know if you've ever ran out of fuel in your boat in the comments section below. Include a hashtag gas gauge for your chance to win the fuel gauge. And when it comes to different manufacturers, the basic difference is that instead of having power and ground and a gauge in the system, the system will only use the sender, the ground going to it, and then the pink sending wire that will go from the sender to the white or pink wire that is on the gauge, depending on what brand you have. Yamaha, Honda, and Suzuki all have either a pink or white wire where the sender will hook up, and they can all be tested the same way by disconnecting and touching the sending wire and the ground together and watching the gauge. For Mercury on the other hand, the system operates even more differently. Instead of the pink wire going to the gauge, it goes to the engine and you cannot touch the sending wire and ground together to test the system. If it doesn't see the resistance from the sender, it will just read zero even when you ground it out. This system has to have the ground connected to the same ground the engine is on, which shouldn't be a problem, but sometimes boats can be wired up a little funny. As long as the ground is good, the big difference is that the sending wire attaches to the engine by what is called a boat harness. This harness has a pink and black wire that attaches to the sender, but also has a blue and black wire that can attach and read a second tank separately as well. This harness will connect to the engine's wire harness and then feeds the information to the computer on the engine to interpret it, which gives the tank level reading to the gauge to let you know how much fuel you have left. To troubleshoot this system, you basically need to pull a sender out and test it for resistance and operation. or have another sender that you can use to hook up to your ground and sending wire and watch the gauge as you move the float. Then if nothing happens, just simply follow the wire like we normally did on the analog system and figure out where the break or bad connection is. 
These systems are becoming more common as more and more boats are putting the engine information and boat system information onto the GPS's instead of analog gauges. And you are now ahead of the curve because you know how they work, how to troubleshoot them and how to fix them. Don't forget to smash that like button and we'll see you next week.